Thunder in the Spirit of Crazy Horse. Reacquiring Primordial Chi. That's what we're going to talk about today. Amongst other things, we're going to correlate it into a whole. Feeling very shamanistic this morning. Uh, very in tune with my star brothers and sisters and the primordial chi. And we're going to talk about the primordial chi and how to reacquire the primordial chi. Because that's the most healing thing and the most beneficial thing and the closest thing to the creative source that you will ever get. So you should listen very closely to what I'm about to say. Now, we go through life every day in what I call a routine, a ritual, an exposure to different elements, okay, or different factions or different feelings or different vibrations or different frequencies that are foreign to us as far as our ancient ancestral roots, okay? All the things that we experience today, most of the things, has nothing to do with primordial chi in a pure sense. Yes, the universe is all chi, and the universe is all energy, but there's forms of it, and there's forms that are more pure in essence. Now, as we go through life, we, we're exposed to many things. Now, let's apply it to modern day life. We're exposed to noise pollution on a massive scale, uh, deprivation of feeling uh, and feelings and senses, okay? natural senses like when is the last time you walked out onto a green pasture soft green pasture with the earth uh, like a flowing uh, bar of chocolate what appeals to you what feels good to you Sticking your toes down in that or slipping on some hard soled shoes and walking on concrete. Um, we have gotten so far away from the par primordial chi that we don't know what it is anymore. People don't know what it is. They don't know what it is to completely let go. Completely let go of most of the false beliefs, belief systems that have been impregnated into societies like our own. And it's not so much just uh, false belief systems, okay, but uh, purposeful propaganda and purposeful uh, brainwashing and mind control. And this is done daily, and again, in our daily routine, a lot of us get up, we have a cup of coffee, we watch the news, you know. Now, I do ritual in the morning, I don't do that, but a lot of people get up and they turn on the radio or they jump in the car and they listen to the news and they, they go to work and they whip out their iPod and then they turn on their air conditioned car and uh, you know if it's raining out they'll turn on the windshield wipers and you know they'll turn up the stereo of some type of music they listen to and they'll jam out onto the freeway and there you go into the into the mess or soup of programmed reality okay programmed reality listen closely people Thunder doesn't like to waste his breath, okay? Uh, and when you get into this programmed reality, let's say on the news or whatever, you'll start being exposed to uh, brainwashing and propaganda and anchors. Now, in neuro-linguistic programming, 
An anchor is something that you see or feel or hear or touch in your reality that brings on a remembrance of or a recalling of a certain incident. Uh, and it happens all the time and they use it all the time. They use it in commercials. Let's say a commercial comes on for soap. Okay, but there's a sexy woman's voice there talking real sexy. Okay, maybe about how she lathers up or whatever. <laughs> Bear with me here, people. <clears throat> so that's an anchor that, that anchors you into a romantic feeling or a sexual feeling and it associates that with soap. Okay, now this is used all the time by governments and societies to control people. It's a constant control of people. Doesn't have anything to do with primordial chi. And they might use something like they're using now in the world stage. The biggest thing I think they use to control people as far as fear tactics go are enemies enemies and uh, words and feelings like terrorism and events coupled with that word or that feeling like 9-11 uh, and they use that as a heavy, heavy-duty anchor and remember what I just said an anchor was it brings fe certain feelings to you and most of those feelings are fear revolving around terrorist threats. That is huge today. Look at it, people. It's a huge, 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 I can't say that enough, anchor. Like a millstone around your neck, cast it off. Cast it off. Let's talk about, I mean, I could go on all day talking about the things that are perpetuated with commercials on TV and propaganda and shows and books and music and everything that is instilled into you might be questioned. Okay, you might want to question it. Now let's let's think about let's think for a minute about primordial chi. Let's think about ancestral traditions. Let's think about ancient ancestral and even oh my god, pagan traditions. Because pagan is means nothing more than worship of nature. Worship of nature or taking gods and goddesses of, of nature. So they would call Native Americans pagan because they call grandfather sky and grandmother earth and they believe all the plants have spirits in them. What is a spirit? It's a god. Now just to show you how far away you have gotten from the reality of your planet, Mother Earth who is a living organism, as is the cosmos. It is a mother. It is a lover. It is anything you want it to be. Now, unless you're in tune with that feeling of Mother Earth and your reverence for it, the creators who put you here, uh realize the power of it. Let's put it that way. For now. There is great power in it. And if you don't think there is great power in it, then what you need to do is exactly this. If you can't do it in real life, then do it in your imagination. So let's imagine for a minute, okay, 
Let's just, if you have to close your eyes, if you have to take a deep breath and just blow out all the negativity and relax. And then hell, take another one. Right now, do it. Come on. Now, as you do this and you're starting to relax, I want you to really get into a visualization, a visualization, visualization, I'll get that out, of different things. Like, uh, for instance, see that fire back here? It's not a real one, but it evokes an anchor. Okay. So what you want to do is you want to close your eyes and breathe in and pretend like you're in a, let's say, a remote environment like a forest or maybe a desert or a little clearing in a desert that is kind of like an oasis or wherever, whatever pleases you amongst some huge rock uh, cliffs in a valley uh, overlooking the landscape, whatever. Picture yourself in a remote area and start opening up your senses like your sense of smell, smelling the greenery around you, the greenery and the dirt, okay, and Mother Earth, and maybe some uh, smells waft through the air of a fire and you are attracted to that fire. And as you get closer to that fire that's raging and people are th throwing logs into uh, you notice other people and they feel like kindred to you and then you start hearing a beating of a drum a rhythmic beating of a drum much like a heartbeat and it makes you want to move and it makes you want to feel like you want to join in with the others because they seem to be dancing around a fire. They're dancing around a fire. And they're looking at the fire as a source of their creation. It feels kind of good. It's not a personification of the deity, it's just uh, a personification of nature and you start feeling the drums and you start moving and you're, you might look down and realize that you're dressed tribally in a tribal fashion. Lots of skin exposed um, and feeling like you're moving with the fire feeling like you're one with the fire and the drums are pounding and you're starting to really release and let go. And when you do this, when you imagine this stuff, you get the f true feeling of what primordial means. It means letting go of everything and, and just becoming one with nature and becoming one with ancient rhythms and becoming one with the ancient gods and goddesses and spirit beings and deities all around us that are there for us, that are there talking to us if we listen. I have a name for them, I call them the Mishi. The Mishi. That was a name that was revealed to me. It's almost like an acronym. It means Mishi, M-I-S-H-I, Master Immortal Spiritual Hybrid Incarnates. Master Immortal Spiritual Hybrid Incarnates. Think about it. And this ancient spirit has been with us for decades. And the ancient spirit, which has been called by many names, is there for us to commune with. 
And as you dance around the fire, as you dance around the fire, you feel almost like an eroticism. And it, it comes up quickly. And it's a feeling of like energy. It's a feeling of energy. It's a feeling of inner chi. It's a feeling of primordial chi moving through you. And suddenly you get visions of people crying out God's name or the deity's name. Maybe it's El or maybe it's Yusun or maybe it's Wakantanka. It could be any of those. It could just be a, a, a sound. Hey, uh. could be a sound, a primordial sound. Now, we're dancing around the campfire here. We're dancing around it because it supplies our needs. The fire supplies our needs. It cooks our food, it keeps us warm. It is a God, it is a spirit. It provides, it provides everything we need. And then we have water and the babbling brook, the flowing water beside the green valley or the forested trees. And there is no modern civilization. We might have a crop of corn. We have our instruments for hunting animals. We wear skins, bear skins, deer skins. We wear different cloths, feathers, beads. Have you ever worn a feather in your hair or on your person? It's, it's very powerful. I have one today right here on my person. Sometimes I wear it in my hair. Sometimes I put it in my hat. How many of you know how to activate a feather? These are things that the ancient people and shamans and shamanesses and yogis and yoginis and medicine men and primordial people were into. They knew this as a matter of everyday life. Their routine was anything but routine. They didn't have little plastic boxes with pictures in them blaring out commands and messages and subliminal messages and frightening messages and scary messages about life. Life was a celebration in the primordial realm, the primordial history, the ancestral history of man. Dancing around the fire no inhibitions, men and women coupling, making love, uh, going with the natural urges of life, enjoying it, having no sense of what they call quote unquote morality, just a vibrational dancing. And then you had the snake priests of the Hopi. And you had the celebrations of the ancient ones and the ancient Pueblo people. The Wu Wu Chim ceremony, the um, the ceremonies of the beginning and and ending of the visitation of the Kachinas. Um, the last of those being the the snake dance, snake priests. Snakes re, re, uh, remind me of uh, 
a previous time, a previous incarnation. Um, snake priests. Offerings. Sacred. Offering of oneself in an energy fashion. Uh, communing with the nature spirits and sprites they are called sometimes or they're just called uh, the spirit that moves in all things now here you are and you're you're dancing around and you're by the fire and the drums are moving and you're moving and are you thinking about terrorists are you thinking about all the commercials on TV talking about what you should take and put in your body and how many side effects it might have? Are you thinking about going to work and having to put up with an asshole boss? <laughs> Are you thinking about maneuvering yourself onto the freeway and hoping that you'll get home in time for dinner? No. You're dancing around a fire. You're in the middle of a remote area. You are with a member of the opposite sex and enjoying a culmination of erotic pleasure. You are doing ritual and offerings to the sources that bring you your food and your water and your well-being, which is water and sun and air and fire, earth. This is how you regain, you know, your connection or reacquire your connection with primordial chi. It's all around us. It's all around us. This is where man went wrong. All the, the systems of belief that perpetrate a personalized deity that is not in oneness with you but overlording you, you should approach with suspicion. Because the spirit that moves in all things is in all of us, is all of us. We are all a part of it. When the Hopi had the corn mother, they ate corn and became one with the corn mother. Tribes. Take a deep breath and try to remember, remember an incarnation that you might have had as a tribal person of either sex. Because you were probably many different people and a variety of people racially. You have been many, many different races in your re previous incarnations and you will continue to be. The realization of our oneness with spirit and oneness with the ancient ones and one, oneness with the master immortal spiritual hybrids. And when I say hybrids, I mean they can come right down here and dwell within us and among us. It's a form of shape-shifting. A form of. Um, and they're ancient. And ancient has to do with ancestral. And ancestral has to do with our original source of birth, not physical birth, but birth into this cosmos.
And as we walk around in this cosmos, our realization of our makeup and our realization of our uh, multifaceted DNA. So, how does it feel to be primordial? And you know, sometimes I have given meditation techniques and I've given uh, shamanistic exercises like splatter vision and being in presence and people might say, yeah, that's cool, I like that and when they do it, yeah, it feels kind of good or whatever, but really getting into it, really getting into being a natural person, a primordial person So the next time you're walking around or jumping on the freeway or getting sucked into something on the tube, turn it off. Turn the tube off and turn off your routine. Or at least jump outside yourself and realize your primordial self. Okay. Realize who you are on a primordial level. It's tribal, T-R-I-B-A-L, tribal, okay, ancient, not of this system of things. This system of things has withdrawn man through technology into a sort of matrix like that movie, a matrix, a web a web of lies, a web of deceit, a web of uh, structure instead of ritual. Ritual. Ritual, ritual releases. Ritual releases. Ritual makes one with, in union with, yoga, in union, fusing, infusion with so you might want to consider reacquiring your primordial chi especially in these these difficult times and you can do this in various ways dress differently dress tribally dress colorful Take off that friggin' tie and throw it away. Has no business on your body. It's not a feather. Get rid of it. <laughs> burn it. Put it in the fire and burn it. Put all these things into an imaginary fire and watch them go up in ashes and see yourself being reborn like the phoenix out of the fire. The bird, the phoenix. Or the thunderbird flying free or the butterfly flying out of its cocoon when it used to be a caterpillar crawling around on the earth which was good too because it was connected to the earth have reverence for mother earth in all things that you see and anything that you might eat you might not be able to go and afford to go to the organic stores, but you can imbibe everything you eat with that spirit of hermetic reverence. Hermetic reverence. Hermes. The Hermes principle. There's lots of principles and lots of guides here on the planet for people to listen to. There's lots of sources and resources to tap into. You must reacquire the primordial chi. That means letting go of all limiting. Let me repeat this real slow. Letting go of all limiting, destructive, negative belief systems. 
And I mean in every way, sense, shape, and form, letting go of all limiting belief systems, all destructive, self-destructive belief systems, all negative belief systems, all projected belief systems by others. Let go of it. Grasp on to your own primordial belief system, which is being unencumbered and dancing next to the fire and shaking your booty or your ass or whatever you do to make you feel good. And being with people that make you feel good and not tolerating the dark unseen forces back in the trees. And here you are next to this fire, enjoying yourself, loving life, loving the kindred people around you, dancing with you, with meaning, with offering. Offering your energies to the deity, the the gods and goddesses of the stars, the ancient, ancient ones that come through the realm of nature. Those are the true beings. Those are the true beings. This is your true self. And you might think of yourself as a master, immortal, spiritual hybrid incarnate. Incarnated into a realm where you have choices. And these choices are very, very important to you. The choices are to connect with the real source of our being, which is primordial, which has everything to do with the earth and ancestral traditions and feelings and lack of, total lack of inhibition, not being inhibited because of moral laws or Christian laws or uh, perceived laws from uh, some personification of God. You know how you feel God when you feel good. And when you're dancing around a fire and you're letting go of all your inhibitions and you're laughing and smiling in a rhythmic manner, does that make you feel good? Then that's God. Because God means good. Most people don't know that. God means good. And if you feel good, do it. Don't worry about any of the restrictions that have been imposed upon you. Break free of the bondage of massive brainwashing and propaganda. Break free of the routine of everyday life. Think outside the box. Think outside the box. And when you do that, you're thinking about the campfire and you're thinking about the flowing water and you're thinking about the sky and you're thinking about Tate, the wind, and Inyan, the mountains, and Mapia, the clouds and Wakinyan, the thunder beings, and nature and rain and thunder and lightning and wind and the essence of all that is. These are the things that are going to help you reacquire primordial chi. And that's the same chi that flows through your body and in all your meridians the Chinese call it the meridians they're like little unseen veins of energy and the Hindu call it prana and pranayama 
the movement of energy in conjunction with all that flows around you and if there's anything that's stopping that flow it's a condition that has been imposed on you mentally from others and then you take that notion that others should impose and you impose upon yourself. You impose upon yourself according to peer pressure. You impose upon yourself according to propaganda. Is that a free primordial spirit to you? Does that make you feel good? Be your own God, be your own goddess, be your own connection to El or Yusin or Mishi, Mishi, Mashi, might be said in different ways. That in tunement with your higher self, in connection to the star brothers and sisters the benevolent star brothers and sisters. Uh, reacquire the power given to you by seeding. Reacquire knowledge. Reacquire ancient, ancient existence. You may not understand everything I say today and it's unimportant. It's the feeling you get from it. It's the feeling you get from it. Let go. For God's sake, let go. Holding on to all the preconceptions and conceptions and belief systems and propaganda and waves and waves and waves of a shit storm you need to let go and be primordial reacquire the primordial chi this is thunder adios people care about you all see you uh, next time uh, almost feel like you know when we're talking about this kind of thing uh, I want to stay on this track because this is the real track here we may talk about world affairs and we may talk about and I may continue to talk about them from time to time but we all have to put it into perspective of and I like doing this in this period of time in this uh, this season of autumn and winter where it really feels good to get around a, a fire. I like to put things in perspective so this is kind of a gift. Look at it as a gift. Thunder's gift to you. Okay people, happy trails to you. <laughs> See you soon. Later on. Adios.